Hi everyone! Today we have yet another Costco video. I'm always so excited for these and you guys seem to like them too. So we have lots of new Costco items to try today. In the past we've tried so many of their different Asian foods like pho, ramen, curry, kayaki, egg tarts, Korean fried chicken, literally endless amount of things. So definitely go check out those other Costco videos if you're interested. And also don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like these Costco videos. It lets me know that you guys want to see more of them. And yeah, let's head over to Costco. First up, we're starting off strong. We're gonna try these Kalbi bone-in beef short ribs. And I was really excited when I saw this at Costco because I've tried the Kalbi that they have at Trader Joe's and I ended up really liking it. So I'm very curious about the Costco one. To prepare this, you can do stovetop or grill, but I don't have a grill, so we're gonna do stovetop. Remove short ribs from package and carefully place in saute pan. Flip ribs every one and a half minutes for a total cooking time of three to five minutes or until internal temperature reaches 125. Adjust the time accordingly to reach desired doneness. Okay, so we have our cooked galbi here and it looks so good. It made the house smell like a literal Korean barbecue restaurant. And honestly, I'm so shocked at how quick and easy it was to make it. It was done within a matter of minutes. So I feel like this would be really good if you're low on time, if you just want to whip up a quick dinner. This is perfect. Look at that short rib. It's glistening. It looks so juicy. Mmm, very beefy, very meaty. The marinade is really nice. It's savory, umami. You got a good hint of sweetness in it as well. The meat could be a little more tender, but honestly, it's not bad. Like, I do have to chew a little bit, but I also think maybe next time I could cook it for less time and that would help with the tenderness. But yeah, this is definitely not bad. Mm. <laughs> Whenever I eat galbi, I always have to clean the bone. It's so satisfying when you get it nice and clean like this. Overall, definitely not bad. I will say if I do compare this to the Trader Joe's one, I think I do like the flavor of the Trader Joe's one more. But yeah, if you're curious about it, pick it up on your next Costco trip. Next up, we have these Calbi Jagarico Original Potato Sticks. It says 12 bags of crispy, crunchy potato sticks with real bits of carrots and parsley. I love anything potato. Opening this up got me so excited. Look at all those bags. I don't know why, but I feel like these are so cute. Like, just look at them. That's what it looks Looks like inside. You can see all those little potato sticks in there. The little specks of orange and green make it look kind of like a fish cake. <laughs> Whoa, it's so crunchy, way crunchier than I expected. I thought it was gonna be like a light kind of crunchy, but it's like a crunchy kind of crunchy. <laughs> I can see these getting addicting really fast. It does have a really nice potato-y flavor. It's kind of similar to eating like a dry French fry, like a French fry in chip form. It really has that same like pure potato flavor and it's nicely salted as well. I'm not really getting the flavor from the parsley and the carrots, but yeah, it's good. <laughs> Next up, we have this Hello Kitty and Friends Boba Milk Tea Variety Box. Literally, we have tried so many Costco boba products that I thought we've gone through them all, but apparently we haven't because I saw this at Costco and I got sucked in by the cute packaging and they have three flavors. They have the brown sugar with Hello Kitty on it, the taro with Melody on it, and the matcha with Kuropi on it. Look how cute they are. I'm obsessed. My inner child is screaming. It's actually unbelievable how happy Hello Kitty makes me. Just going into this, I want to preface, I feel like it's probably not gonna be good but I did get sucked in by the packaging so we're gonna try it today. Let's go ahead and start with the Hello Kitty flavor which is the brown sugar and of course we're gonna use our Feed Me Make Glass Boba Straw. Link will be in the description as always. I'm gonna pour it into a clear cup so you guys can see what it looks like on the inside. All right, you can see the boba swirling around down there. Very curious about that and also I put these in the fridge yesterday so it's nice and cold. I feel like my mouth just went on a roller coaster. The flavor of the milk tea itself is actually not that bad. You do get a flavor of the brown sugar. You do get a tea flavor, which a lot of these canned milk teas, I don't taste the tea flavor <laughs> at all. So I give it points for that. However, the boba texture itself, I'm not a huge fan of. Whenever they try to put boba in a can, it's just never really a good texture. It just kind of has this like soft jelly texture, but with a little crunch to it. It's not like crystal boba, which has this nice like satisfying crunch to it. And 
and it's not like regular boba, which has a nice chewy bounciness. I guess it's kind of like an in-between, but not in a good way. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised at the drink. Not that I think it's like the most amazing thing ever, but it's definitely better than some of the other canned boba milk teas I've tried. Next, let's try the matcha milk tea with Karopi. Again, you can see the boba swirling around. I'm sure it's the same boba that was in the other can. Whoa, first to get the boba out of the way, yes, it is the same as the other can, so not a huge fan of the texture, but the flavor of the matcha milk tea really took me by surprise. Not because I feel like it has a strong matcha flavor, but it actually has a really strong green tea flavor specifically. Matcha and green tea do taste similarly, but they do also taste different. And this one tastes more like green tea than matcha to me. Very interesting. This one also was sweeter than I expected it to be, or maybe it's because I had the brown sugar one before this and the sweetness is building in my mouth, I don't know, but this one was definitely giving too sweet. <laughs> and then last but not least, let's try the taro flavor by My Melody. Oh, whoa, it's like not purple. <laughs> I totally thought it was gonna be purple because the brown sugar one was brown, the matcha one was green, and the taro one is also brown. I'm so surprised. Oh, whoa. This feels like my mind is playing tricks on me because it does taste like taro. Like it tastes like that taro, artificial taro powder kind of taste, but it's brown <laughs> and not purple. So my mind is very confused when I drink this. Maybe if I close my eyes, that will help. Yeah, I was imagining that the drink was purple and that made more sense to me. But anyway, if you like that artificial taro flavor, which I do sometimes, like I do like real taro flavor, but I also like artificial taro flavor at times. I actually think it's not bad. Out of the three, I liked the brown sugar one the best, then taro second place and the matcha third place. But that's all excluding the boba because I did not like the boba texture. So next up, we have this O Food Authentic Korean Cold Noodles with chilled broth. I was so excited to see this at Costco because I love Korean and cold noodles. So in here, it has four servings. You have the broth and the noodles. So none of the other toppings come with it. You just got the broth and the noodles. To prepare this, it says to cook the noodles in boiling water for one minute. Keep stirring to prevent noodles from sticking. Immediately drain and rinse cooked noodles with cold running water several times. Squeeze any excess moisture from the noodles and place the noodles in a serving bowl. Pour cold broth into the bowl. All right, so we have our Korean cold noodles here. They look so, so good. Look at how stretchy. And on the packet, it did say that they have some pro tips to add a hard boiled egg, some cucumber, radish, sesame seeds, but I did not prepare for that. So I don't have any toppings with mine today. And also they recommended to freeze the broth for three hours so you could get a nice icy broth. So we don't have the icy broth, but it is still nice and cold. Mm. Mm. That's really good. The noodles are really nice and chewy and springy. And also since they're really, really thin, it adds a lot of different textures. And just from eating the noodles, I got so much flavor of the broth. And it's so refreshing because it's cold. It's been so hot in these summer days and this is perfect. Let's try some of the broth on its own. Ooh, it has such a nice refreshing flavor. It's acidic, so it has like a tart sour taste to it. It's really good, really refreshing. Out of everything we tried so far, this has to be my favorite. I definitely will be buying this again. Next up, we have this Tropical Fields Premium Matcha Mochi with matcha powder. I believe this is the same brand that makes all those different kinds of boba mochi. Look at all those mochis inside. Ooh, oh my gosh, it's so much darker than I expected. Whoa, the way it looks on the bag is the literal opposite way that it looks in actuality. If you see on the bag, the filling is a really dark green. So not quite what I expected. It does have a chewy texture to it, but it's not as like stretchy chewy as mochi usually is. Like, let's see what happens when we try to break it apart. Yeah, it's not that stretchy. Usually when you break mochi apart, it's like very stretchy, but this one, not as stretchy. There is kind of like a matcha flavor to it. It doesn't taste like premium matcha like they advertise, but it's not overly sweet, which is something that I do like about it. Overall though, I'd say I wouldn't buy it again. So next up, we have this Bibigo shrimp fried rice. It's perfectly stir fried rice with succulent shrimp, carrots, egg, edamame, and red bell pepper. It even says it includes Korean hot sauce. And if you guys remember in one of the first Costco videos that we did, I tried a different brand's chicken fried rice. And ever since that video, we buy that fried rice every single week when we go to Costco. Bird is literally obsessed. He eats it almost every single day. If you watch the vlog, 
channel, you know. So when I saw this at Costco, I was so curious to see if this could put up a fight with the chicken fried rice. So to cook it, there's microwave directions and pan fried directions. I'm gonna go for the microwave method. So tear open corner of bag to vent, place bag on a microwave safe plate with contents spread flat, cook on high for three minutes, let rest one minute, carefully tear open top of bag where marked and pour contents onto plate, enjoy. So here we have our Bibigo shrimp fried rice. It smells really, really good and it looks good too. Like the egg looks so fluffy, the shrimp looks nice and juicy. So let's give it a try. Mmm, the fried rice has a nice savory flavor and I do like the little bits of fluffy egg with the texture of the carrot and crunchy edamame too. One thing I do have to say that gives this one a leg up is that the other chicken fried rice, it has peas and that's my least favorite part about fried rice, but this one doesn't actually have peas. It has edamame, bell pepper, carrot, and eggs. But the shrimp in this is definitely on the chewier side, not like that nice snappiness, but I do get that it obviously is microwaved frozen fried rice, so it's hard to get that perfect shrimp texture, but let's try it with some of this hot sauce that they put in it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit on in case it's too spicy. Oh, whoa, it definitely does have a kick to it. I feel some of that heat in the back of my throat, but the heat does pair pretty nicely with the fried rice. However, usually I eat the chicken fried rice with sriracha, you know, before sriracha was like $50 a bottle. So yeah, I think I actually would prefer this with sriracha versus the gachu sauce. So next up, we have these honey butter mixed nuts, which has almonds, walnuts, cashews, and macadamia nuts. And I believe this is the same brand that we tried the assorted flavored almonds. And I remember really liking those. You can see in there we have all the almonds, walnuts, cashews, and macadamia nuts. I'm gonna start with the almond. I feel like that's a classic. Mm. Mm. It's like sweet. It does have like a buttery flavor to it. It pairs so well with the flavor of the almond and it's nice and crunchy. Mm. Next, let's try the cashew. Mmm. Okay, whoa. I did not expect it, but the cashew was so good. Maybe even better than the almond. I don't know what it is, but I feel like the cashew paired with the honey butter seasoning or whatever, it's kind of giving like a candied nut kind of taste and texture. Mmm, mmm. Next, let's try the walnuts. Whoa, it's kind of very reminiscent of like honey, walnut, shrimp, walnuts. You get the sweetness from the honey and then the crunchiness from the walnuts and the walnuts flavor as well. It's literally reminding me of honey, walnut, shrimp. Last but not least, let's try the macadamia nut. Mm. The flavor of the macadamia nut pairs really well with the honey butter. It's really good. My number one favorite is definitely the cashews. I feel like the almonds and the macadamia nut I would tie at second and then third is the walnuts. Next step, we have these Korean style crispy potato corn dogs by the brand Han Chef. And I am so excited about these. I love Korean corn dogs so much. I especially like the ones with the potato on the outside. To prepare it, it says microwave and air fryer is the most recommended way. So we place frozen corn dogs in a microwave safe dish without cover or wrap and heat them by referring to the table below. After preheating an air fryer to 355, take corn dogs out of microwave and place them in the air fryer. Cook them by referring to the table below. So since we're doing two corn dogs, I'm gonna air fry them for 12 minutes. Okay, here we have our Korean crispy potato corn dogs. I may have left them in the air fryer too long, but I did follow the instructions. So maybe it's supposed to look this uh, golden. <laughs> Do you guys hear that? It sounds so crispy. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's steaming. It's so hot. I was hoping for a cheese pull. Let me try again. Oh. Oh. Uh -uh. <laughs> The cheese pull game is weak, but the texture game is strong. It's so, so crispy and crunchy. You do get that nice flavor from the fried potatoes on the outside. The batter itself, it's actually on the sweet side. Like it kind of gives me a hint of like a waffle batter kind of taste. It's not as sweet as waffle batter, but it is sweet like waffle batter, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna add some ketchup. I do like it with the ketchup. Usually when I get Korean corn dogs, they have all these different kinds of sauces that you can choose from, but at my house, I don't have all those different sauces, so I'm just using ketchup and it's pretty good. Overall, is it as good as what you're gonna get at a Korean corn dog shop? Definitely not, but I do think it's good enough to like hold over your cravings for when you do get to go to a real Korean corn dog shop. I just think that the sweetness of the batter was a little bit off-putting, but not bad. So next up, we have this Chi Forest flavored sparkling water in white peach and lychee fizz 
fizzy. I also am not a huge fan of sparkling water, but I hope that since these are flavors that I really like, that maybe I might like these sparkling waters. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the white peach one first. Ooh, it smells like peach rings. All right, cheers. Mmm, this is good. It definitely does have a really good peach flavor to it. And there is sweetness in there, but it complements like the fizzy sparkling water really well. So, so refreshing. I think the reason I like this better than LaCroix is because it has definitely a stronger flavor to it. I feel like LaCroix, it's just like a little tiny whiff of whatever flavor it's supposed to be. But this one definitely, you can taste the peach really well. I really don't usually like sparkling water, but this is good. Next, let's try the lychee fizzy. Ooh, it smells like those little lychee jelly cups. I used to eat so many of those when I was a kid. Oh, ooh, I like this one too. It has a nice subtle hint of lychee in there. It has a sweetness too, just like the peach one. Very refreshing, very light. Pleasantly surprised at these two, honestly. So next up, we have this Kevin's Natural Foods Thai style coconut chicken. It's tender chicken breast strips paired with a flavorful coconut curry. They sous vide their chicken breast strips, so it's supposed to be extra tender. So to prepare it, we heat scale it over medium high for one minute and add one tablespoon of cooking oil. Add chicken to hot skillet, separate chicken strips with tongs, and heat for one to two minutes on each side until lightly browned. Reduce heat to low, pour sauce into skillet, and simmer for 30 seconds, stirring chicken to coat with sauce. Serve up and enjoy. All right, so we have our coconut chicken curry here, and it literally smells so, so good. I can't wait any longer. Let's try one of these pieces of chicken. Oh my gosh, the chicken is super tender, especially considering it's chicken breast. It's like not dry at all. You can definitely tell that they sous vide it because it is so tender. The curry is very flavorful and savory. It has that hint of coconut too. And paired with that tender, juicy chicken, this is a winner. This is so perfect as like a quick dinner that you can whip up in a few minutes and it's still very flavorful. I feel like this would definitely come in handy on those busy days. All right, next up, we have these big roll grilled seaweed snacks and it comes with three different flavors. We have the classic, the spicy, and the barbecue sauce flavor. Let's go ahead and try the classic flavor first. Whoa. Whoa, <laughs> look at these. They're just like rolled up seaweed and it feels very crispy and crunchy. Mm. Whoa, it is so, so crispy. I'm sure you guys heard that. And look, it's hollow. <laughs> it does have a very interesting flavor. It's like kind of sweet and salty. Definitely, of course, get the seaweed flavor as well. I feel like the flavor of this is like seaweed, but enhanced. Next, let's try the spicy one. Ooh. Ooh, this one, the roll looks a little different. It has little specks of like red in it. Whoa. First, when I bit into it, I was very surprised because it tastes really different from the classic flavor. It almost has like a bonito flake flavor to it, like that fishiness. And then the heat came after and I was like, whoa, it took me by surprise. So these are not one of those spicy snacks that really has no spice. You definitely feel the heat with this. Last but not least, let's try the barbecue sauce flavor. Oh, this one looks pretty similar to the first one, the classic flavor. Hmm, it does have a barbecue flavor to it, kind of like smoky. Oh yeah, the more you eat it, the smokier it gets. I feel like out of all of them, the seaweed flavor is the least prominent in this. All of them were pretty good and all of them were definitely really flavorful. That's a, such a fun snack. Next up, I'm sure many of you guys know what this is. This is the Samyang Bulldog Carbonara Ramen. This is the same bread that had that nuclear spicy ramen challenge. It was the black packet and then they had a two times spicy, which is the red packet. And a few years ago, I tried the pink one, which is the carbonara. And that one is my favorite out of the three. So when I saw them at cost I knew I had to get it. I absolutely love this ramen. So to prepare this, we open the lid halfway and remove the two packets, pour boiling water up to the inner line, close lid and let stand for four minutes. After four minutes, keep six tablespoons of water, add the sauce and cheese powder, stir well and serve. All right, our carbonara ramen is ready. I am so, so excited. It looks very saucy and it smells very cheesy. Oh my gosh. Look at how those noodles are coated in that sauce. Oh man, that spice is already hitting me. 
so spicy, so cheesy, but so good. It'd be even better if you got some cheese and melted it on top. That would be the ultimate cheesy ramen experience. If you've never tried the Samyang ramen, this is your sign to try it. Last but not least, we have this Maven's Creamery Durian Ice Cream. I have not been known to be a fan of durian, but I've heard so many great things about this ice cream. And also right now, since I just ate spicy stuff, ice cream does sound really good. So maybe that'll help it. Oh. Oh, it does smell like durian, but I'm also not hating it right now. It has this kind of like yellow, orangey color to it. Almost looks very similar to like a mango color. I'm just gonna try a little bit. Cheers. Oh gosh, yep, that's durian all right. <laughs> It does have a very strong durian flavor. However, out of all the durian things I've tried, I feel like this might be the most palatable one. It is sweet and it does have a little bit of a custardy flavor, I guess, but it has a very off-putting other flavor. But yeah, I'm glad I tried it. I definitely don't think me not liking it is any knock to the product. I really like the texture of the ice cream. It's just that I'm not the biggest fan of durian, but if you are, you will definitely like it. All right, so after all the Costco foods we tried today, I'd have to say my top three things are definitely that Korean cold noodle. That was absolutely amazing. I also really loved those honey butter nuts. Definitely gonna be on my snack rotation. And it's so hard to pick a last one because we tried so many great things today, but I did actually really like that Thai coconut chicken. I'm still thinking about how juicy and tender the chicken was. So those are my top three favorites. Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite item that we tried today? And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.